Good morning. It's July 8th, 2020, and this is the Discovery Day program daily show. Let's get started with some exercise and we'll begin with our observances. Hi, my name is Emily, and today we are going to be going over range of motion and also stretching. So, get yourself in a nice seated position, get a chair, and sit comfortably. We are first going to begin with doing some neck stretches. Start by tilting your head to one side of your body. Hold that position. You feel the stretching in your neck back here? I do. feels good after all this time just sitting on the couch. Now let's move to the other side. Stretch. You can rock back and forth a little bit if you want, kind of like a windshield wiper. We are going to change sides. Hold that stretch again. Breathe comfortably as you're sitting during this exercise. You can rock your head a little bit. Feel the stretch in your shoulders and your neck but don't be uncomfortable. It should be just right. Now, let's look up at the ceiling. Tilt your head all the way back and let your head rest. Hold this position. Close your eyes if you want. Take a deep breath. That feels good. All right, now we're gonna move our chin to our chest and go ahead and look down and hold that neck stretch. Feels good to stretch these muscles and stretch your neck. Yeah, that feels great. Hold that position a little while longer and slowly bring yourself up. Good. Next, we're going to do some neck rotations. So turn your neck to one side. Try and look over your shoulder if you can. Bring it back to the front and again over the other side. Try and look as far over your shoulder as possible. This is a great range of motion exercise. Good. Now, we're gonna do the same thing, but up and down. Up and down. Either like you're nodding politely or you're falling asleep in math class. I like the math class version. Stretch your neck. Do it slowly. Good. Now, let's draw some circles with our heads. Draw some circles. Pretend like your nose is a pen, and I just ask you to scribble down a picture of a circle. Now, go the other way. You can do this really slowly if you want, but it feels good to just get some motion in your neck. Great job. Let's stretch out our arms. Grab one arm and pull it over your chest. Hold your elbow and feel that right in your shoulder blade, right? Feel the stretch and hold it. You guys look like you've done this before. All right, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Get loosey loosey and switch arms. Same thing, holding the elbow, bringing the arm across the chest, and hold the stretch. You should feel a slight tugging in your shoulder muscles, in your upper arm. That's normal, but if it causes you any pain, don't continue. Good job. All right, let's do some hand stretches. All right, lock your fingers together and push all the way out in front of you. Good, just like that. 
Now, if you're not able to lock your fingers together like this, we have some alternative methods. You can use your fists and your hands. So put your fists in front of you and pull one or the other. Or just reach your hands out like fists as far as you can in front of you. You don't have to interlock if it's uncomfortable. Let's hold this stretch and we'll bring it up over our heads. Wow, I haven't done this move since I was like three. Hold it like you're a ballerina. All right, let's do some of our, remember our yoga poses is our crescent moon. We're gonna turn it over to the side. Stretch your back. Good. Wiggle your fingers and shake it out. Our next pose, we're gonna be practicing rowing our shoulders. Row them forward. Forward. So roll those shoulders. I find it best to go up to your ears. I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. But roll your shoulders forward. Good, you're drawing circles. All right, here we go. Bring it up to your ears. Ready? One, two, three. Roll it up and down. Up and down. Don't bring your head down to your shoulders. Try and bring your shoulders all the way up to your ears. Good job. Now, let's do the reverse. Let's roll it backwards. Roll it backwards. Don't forget to try and bring them up as far as you can to your ears. Now this move kind of looks like you don't know the answer when you're called on in math class. All right, let's shake out our wrists. Shake, 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 shake. Get nice and loose. You might hear some things moving around in your wrists. That's normal. Shake out your fingers. Shake them, shake them, shake them. Bring up one hand and we are going to start massaging our fingers. So hold up your hand. And we're just gonna do some light massaging on our fingers, our knuckles, our hands. If you have limited hand use, don't worry about this portion, just do what you can. And massage whatever use you have use of out of your hand. Good, let's switch. Shake your wrist, shake your hand, spread your fingers apart and massage. Good. Feels nice to relax a little bit. All right, let's turn those wrists a couple more times. Great. Now, let's bring your arm up back behind your head and grab your elbow. You should feel a stretch again in your upper arms. And this helps to lengthen and strengthen your back. Pull it gently back behind your head and hold it. All right, we're gonna get ready to switch our arms. Shake it out if you need to. Do the opposite arm, bring it up, over, and behind your head. Hold that elbow. Good job. All right, shake it out if you need to. Relax, get in some stretches. We are now going to do some arm lifts. You're going to raise our arms up over our heads, kind of like a jumping jack, but we're gonna be remaining seated. Bring your arms up over your head and touch your tips, then go back down. Bring your hand up if you can only have one hand to use right now. Bring your hands up. Touch the tips of your fingers and bring them back down. Good. These are way easier than jumping jacks. Pretend you're a bird flying through the sky. That makes me feel peaceful. Good job, let's move on. We're gonna do some trunk twists, all right? Sit tall and rotate your body. Rotate your torso, your abs, Take a deep breath in between. Rotate. All of these exercises are being done from a sitting position. We want you guys to be as safe as possible while you're at home. 
Good job. Nice. Now, let's reach up and pull down. Kind of like we're reaching up and pulling down the weight bar at the gym. I wouldn't know about that, but if I did go to the gym, this is what I would imagine it would look like. Reach up and pull down. Reach up, pull down that heavy bar. Oh, look at your muscles, mm-hmm. Working on that summer body, reach up and pull down. Good job. And this is good to get extension in your arms. Ooh, that was a workout. Reach up and down. All right, guys, our next portion we're gonna be working on is our legs. Range of motion in our legs, it's good for our physical health. Let's start by bringing up one leg straight out in front of you. Lift up, just bring your toes as far up as you can. Switch legs, same thing, bring them up as far as you can. Let me see your toes. I had to put on shoes for the first time and I don't know how long for this video. All right, let's bring up our knee as far up as you can. You're gonna keep it in that right angle, kind of like you're marching in a parade or a marching band. You can add some weights here if you'd like for a, a more difficult exercise. But for now, if you're at home, you probably don't have any, so just use what you can. Take a breath and relax, and let's continue. Bring our toes up, and we're gonna draw circles with our toes. This helps your ankle rotations. Remember to do what you can with whatever you can. So if you have a hard time moving your feet, just do the best that you can. Get a good stretch in, that's all we're focused on. Now do the other side for those ankle rotations. Good. Do the same thing on the opposite leg. Draw a circle, going one way with your ankle or your toes. Good. Keep it going. You might feel some cracking in your ankles. All right, let's stop and go the other way. Good. Get those ankle twists in as many as you can. All right, next we're gonna be opening and closing our legs. Open, close, open, close. We do this exercise at the day program. Helps with your hips and opening up your legs, just to get some movement in your lower half of your body. You can also put a playground ball or um, a, a different object in between your legs that you can help squeeze. Right, let's sit comfortable again, sit nice and tall. You're gonna put one leg over the other and look behind you. Hold that stretch. Mm -hmm, you're doing great. All right, shake it out. Let's do the other side. Ooh, more shaking. Relax, deep breath, and other side. Hold that stretch, look as far behind you as you can. Hold on to your leg. And get ready to release it. Ah, great job. Take a deep breath and let it out. Next, we're gonna reach forward and try and bend and touch your toes. Remember, we're doing this in a seated position. And if you're in a wheelchair, please remember to fasten your seatbelt at all times. Reach forward as far as you can to touch your toes. We're gonna to stretch our back. Hold that stretch. Keep looking at your toes. You can take some deep breaths during this time. All right, now when you're done, you're gonna slowly bring yourself up. Don't come up too fast or you'll get dizzy. All right, how's your back feel? Pretty good? All right, next, bring your leg on top of your other leg. 
and you're gonna do the same thing where you lean forward. This helps your lower back muscles and your upper leg muscles. Sorry if you hear my dogs barking, you will know that we're, we're all recording from home. With my yoga video the other day, there were lawn mowers and kids in the pool, but. All right, slowly bring yourself back up. Not too fast, you don't wanna get a head rush. Go ahead and relax and do the other leg. So what are you guys doing at home? Are you staying safe? Get out and go for a walk. All these good things that are helpful for your physical health and your mental health. All right, you can also go ahead and push down on this leg to uh, help further your stretch. Helps with your upper leg. And slowly go ahead and start to bring yourself up. Not too fast, take a deep breath. Hmm, let's get situated again. All right, we are done for the day. Thank you. You guys have a great time in the morning show and I'll see you later. Our first observance is be a kid again day. As people grow up, most of us forget the simple joys of being a kid. While it's generally a good idea to grow up and be responsible and be independent, most misunderstand and label innocent things as being childish and they think of it as a negative. Today's observance reverses that. While yes, childish behavior should be frowned upon as an adult, something like wanting to color a coloring book shouldn't. Plenty of adults color as a way of meditation or relaxation. Do you want to watch cartoons? Why is it frowned upon if you're an adult? I still think the Animaniacs are funny and I enjoy it, so I still watch it. Do you want to do some art? And do you want to use some crayons? Why are crayons only for children? No other art material can replicate that kind of uh, waxy look that crayons can make, so what if that's the style I want to do? Think of things that most people laugh at or things that people think negatively of because they think they're childish but actually do no harm and may even be a positive force and reduce stress and increase happiness. Comment them below if you can. Give them a try today. Next is National Ice Cream Sunday Day. Day Day, Sunday Day, Sunday Day. For this observance, I want you to create your own Sunday. Remember that a Sunday is an ice cream topped with syrup and some and topped with another solid sprinkle or of some sort. Uh, first choose a flavor of ice cream, that's step one, and then choose a flavor of syrup, and then choose a sprinkle. Uh, if you're wondering what a sprinkle is, you could use any kind of nuts that you like. You could use fruit, small candy like M&M's, uh, Reese's, stuff like that. Be creative. I don't want to hear a sundae that you could get easily in a store near you. And this one is National Milk Chocolate and Almonds Day. The milk chocolate isn't my favorite. I prefer dark chocolate. The presence of almonds make it taste good to me. It lowers, it kind of balances the sweetness of it. Uh, it's even better if the almonds are chopped or crushed so it's easy to chew. You don't have to bite on something that is solid and really hard. Um, yeah, but I know you guys, I know some of you guys aren't a fan of almonds. Uh, but I wonder anyways, do you like milk chocolate with almonds? If you do, comment below if you do. If not, don't comment below. National Freezer Pop Day. The past week has been real hot, and in fact, it's actually hot right now. It would be a really good idea to enjoy a freezer pop today. Not only is it the relief from the heat, it's also a way for you to celebrate today's observance. What kind of flavor of freeze pop do you like the most? Comment down below. And now we're off to look at today in history. 1776, the Liberty Bell tolls to announce the Declaration of Independence. Uh, we all know that July 4th, 1776 was when the Declaration of Independence was published. And that's why we celebrate the 4th of July with fireworks and barbecuing. But back then, things aren't as instant as we do have it today with our cell phones and the internet with the computers. 
So it took a few days later and, and it reached to July 8th when the Liberty Bell tolled to announce the Declaration of Independence. And at the 8th is when everybody gathered uh, in front of the Liberty Bell so that uh, the Declaration of Independence could be read to them. Uh, and that's in Philadelphia. That's where the bell was. And another reason why it took that long was because um, it took about four days until they got the document from the printer no not the computer printer the company that prints the documents back then 1777 Vermont abolishes slavery there's a bit of a technicality here because the first state that abolished slavery was Pennsylvania in 1780 uh, so what about Vermont it's a 1777 right there right well Vermont uh, was a colony and it wasn't a state yet when they abolished slavery. Vermont became the state, uh, became a state uh, at the the 14th state actually, much later. Uh, it happened in 1791. So at this point in time, Vermont wasn't a state yet. So you can't really say that they are the first state. Uh, but they are the first um, colony or region that abolished slavery. Good for them. 1853 Commodore Perry sailed into Tokyo Bay Commodore Perry was a figure that's not really well known at this side of the globe but he is taught in schools in Japan long ago for a long period of time Japan practiced what they called Sakoku which is a closed country where they will not allow any foreigners to come into the country uh, to, to even trade not even to visit to trade nothing because they fear influence from the outside world they didn't allow anyone except two uh, nations the Chinese because they have uh, they always had some close relations with China and the Dutch um, and they could only trade in the island of Dejima in Nagasaki somewhere in the south uh, part of Japan that was the case until Commodore Perry uh, from the United States arrived in Tokyo Bay with a squadron of four vessels and these vessels aren't just any boats they are gunboats and by threatening uh, Japan the government of Japan they, they wouldn't talk to him to begin with but after threatening them they finally agreed to accept the letter from President Fillmore and the United States became the first Western nation to establish trade with Japan after centuries. You know how long a century is? Uh, like a hundred years. And centuries means multiple hundred years of being close to everyone except the Dutch and Chinese. You know, I don't really approve of intimidation, but the end result was healthy trade. So, I don't know, maybe it was good? What do you think? Our notable figure born today is Ferdinand von Zeppelin, born in 1838. Does that name sound familiar? Well, it's because Zeppelins are the name given to those massive blimp-like airships. Uh, his full name is Ferdinand Adolf Henrik August Graf von Zeppelin. Wow, that's a mouthful. That, that would be kind of annoying to write down your name. If, if someone says write down your full name, you have to be like, you have to write all that. Anyways, Mr. Zeppelin continued to advance his work and has created newer versions of the Zeppelin. And the result is that uh, the years that it was in production and it was in use up until 1914, the German Aviation Association transported over 37,000 people on over 1,600 flights without an incident. And so within a few years, the Zeppelin revolution began creating the age of air transportation. So they were the first uh, commercial airplanes, basically. Now, now we, we use airplanes. We don't use Zeppelins anymore. Today's animal of the day is axolotl. The axolotl are sometimes called the Mexican walking fish, but it is really more like a salamander, which are more closely related to lizards than fish. Uh, the species were originally found in lakes in Mexico City, like Lake Xochimilco. D don't worry, I'll put that up on the screen so that you could see how it's spelled. And they are considered an unusual species of amphibians. 
See, most amphibians develop lungs when they grow up so that they could get out of the water and live on land. But the axolotl does not do that. They stay on water. In 2010, axolotls are almost extinct due to several factors, including uh, rapid urbanization. So the city grows bigger and bigger. And uh, along with that, um, pollution. The good news is because of the awareness that's been brought towards uh, preserving wildlife, uh, they were saved. And while they still aren't on the clear, they're no longer extinct. However, they're still endangered. Mexico City, now realizing this, started working on conserving axolotls by building shelters for them so that they could live comfortably and conserving uh, any remaining uh, habitats for them so they won't build anything on top of uh, areas that the axolotls live. Today's plan of day is sweet basil. Sweet basil is the most common type of basil that you find in the grocery store if you're looking to buy some. Basil is one of the more common herbs with culinary applications, which means it can be used as an ingredient in many dishes like pesto or pizza. In fact, pesto goes in so many things that you could make more out of it. You could put it in a sandwich, you could use it to sauce a pasta. Best thing about sweet basil is that they're easy to grow. They are very resilient and they could survive in full sun or even partial sun. So you can grow them in your garden or your kitchen window sill. Basil is also resilient to heat. My basil looked like it wilted in the past few days because it's so hot, but now it's back to looking healthy. Instead of paying a lot of money buying it at the grocer, why not grow your own? Our place of the day is the Mausoleum of the First Qin Emperor. When you speak of places in China, immediately most people will say, pretty sure you said the Great Wall, but how about something else that the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang, also built? Undiscovered until recently, just in the year of 1974, archaeologists have unearthed thousands of life-size statues of warriors made of terracotta, uh, that's pottery basically and more they say is still unfound so there's more there's they already found thousands upon thousands and they still they still believe that there's more uh, now instead of moving them because there's so many of them they built a mausoleum complex over the area like built a roof over it to kind of protect it to house the rows of statues that has become a UNESCO World Heritage Site the warriors are all facing east, where the first emperor's enemies were, each varying in height, clothing, faces, and was believed to be actual depictions of every individual in his army. They were not just replicated and looked alike. They were constructed and buried with the dead emperor with the belief that they were to protect him in his afterlife. Our art of the day is Along the River During the Qingming Festival by Zhang Duan. A very unique art depicting the daily life of common folk thousands of years ago. Why is it unique and why am I not showing it to you right now? Well, because the art is a very, very long piece that is meant to be viewed from right to left. As you unfurl it, it's in a scroll and you see it a little at a time. It's basically the ancient form of what we now would be considered animation. So, let's take a look at today's art as I show it to you in a video since it won't fit in the screen.
Our word of the day is weird. W E I R D. It is an adjective, so that means it's describing something,、uh, and it means it's suggesting that something is supernatural or uncanny. Similar words that you might have heard of that also means weird is eerie,、uh, unnatural, creepy, strange. Or here in the United States, informally, we sometimes say something is weird when something is just not the usual. You know, it doesn't have to be supernatural, just something that's not usual, so unusual. Career of the day is a chemist. Chemists earn seventy-four thousand a year, and it's their job to perform very complex research projects. Chemists search for new knowledge about chemicals and use it to improve the way we live. They may develop products like drugs,、uh, cosmetics. Sometimes you gotta make sure that your makeup doesn't melt your face, right? Chemists contribute to bettering the environment. By creating or improving the processing of chemicals, so that we can reduce energy and reduce pollution, chemists also helps in many more aspects of our lives because everything that surrounds us is made of chemicals. Even something as natural as an apple contains small amounts of several chemicals like isoquercetin, ferulic acid, lutein, neoxanthin, niacin, thiamine, folate, and a lot more than that. Can't name all of it. It's a chemist's job, and it's also their job to know and understand what each of them mean for us human beings, for our nutrition, and also other applications. Our fact of the day: Speaking of China, ketchup's origin is Chinese. Ketchup comes from a Chinese word. It's from the Hokkien Chinese term ketchup. And it's usually、uh, not usually. It is originally a sauce that is made of fermented fish, so that doesn't sound like ketchup at all. But when the Europeans found out about it, they tried to replicate it later, and little by little, it evolved to what we have today with the、uh, tomatoes and all. Especially when they、um, added vinegar and sugar, that 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 wasn't part of the original recipe. This is evidenced by an old recipe in 1732. Called ketchup in paste, referring to the East Indies as its origin. So East Indies, China is that's what they used to call them back then.、Uh, it didn't even resemble ketchup because it included mushrooms, walnuts, oysters, and anchovies. So there's the fish part. In 1812, that's when ketchup started to have tomatoes. It also included spices and brandy, but it's still not the ketchup we know today because it still didn't have vinegar and sugar. In the early years of the 20th century, the modern ketchup、uh, emerged. It contained unsafe levels of preservatives, though, and、uh, it was found by Dr. Harvey Wiley, who later teamed up with Henry Heinz. Heinz, you should know where that name comes from now.、Uh, they developed a recipe using ripe red tomatoes, which is a natural preservative, instead of using chemical preservatives, so it's safer for you. And that is it for today's show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Unfortunately, there's no bloopers or extra shows today, but look forward to the next Ability to Go series, where we're gonna go back to Stanton and see what happened to our old、uh, Discovery area. See you guys till then. <laughs>